The other important point that we need to uh, keep in mind regarding ICB RMS grid is that uh, for every packet that has been discarded by the routers is not going to be reported as an ICMP message. There are certain cases where the ICMP messages are not generated. So these are the four special cases where the ICMP is not generated. The first case is if any of the ICMP packet is discarded by any router because of any reason, then for this discarded packet there is no ICMP sent. The other case is of the fragmented datagram. So if the data packet has been fragmented into many fragments then only for the first fragment if it is going to be discarded by any router during transmission then only the ICMP message will be sent. ICMP message is also not uh, sent for any of the multicasted or uh, broadcasted communication. So if any of the packet that contains a multicast address for this there is no ICMP message generated. Similarly, there is no ICMP error message will be generated for any datagram that contains a special address like 127.0.0.0 or a default address that is 0.0.0.0. So these are some cases where the ICMP messages are not going to generate. Let's look, let us look about the, the content of the data field. So just have a look on this packet format. So we have seen that the 8 bytes are for the header and the remaining byte is for the data part. Now what is, what are the contents of this data? So this is the contents of data. Now whenever any packet is discarded and the ICAP packet needs to be generated or delivered to the sender. So ICAP packet is created. In that ICAP packet there is a 8 byte header and in the data part we are going to keep these special information which consists of the IP header of the discarded packet plus 8 bytes. Now what is the purpose of including this information in the ICMP? So let's have a look here. So if we look uh, to this structure we can see that these bytes, the IP header that is 20 bytes plus 8 bytes. Now this is to be included in the ICMP packet. Now what is the information which is contained in these bytes? So this IP header is basically telling is information about the source. Who is the, who is the sender? And this 8 byte will contain the information. Now if you look at the structure, so we have a transport layer. Transport layer will create one when a segment now the segment consists of the header and data and it will be delivered to the down layer which is a network layer so at the network layer again we are having a header and data and data part is actually the 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 part which is received from the above layer which consists of header and data similarly this will be keep on moving like this. It goes to the down layer. Down layer is going to add some header to it. And whatever is received from the above layer will become the data part. So to the data link layer, this entire part is a data. And it will add some header and also trail to this uh, frame. Now if we look at this network layer, network layer is going to create the ICMP packet. Fine. So if any of the packet is going to be discarded, let's say this is one datagram which consists of header and data. Now if you look at this data part, data part is something which is received from the above layer which consists of header and data at the transport layer. So if you look at this, this initial bytes are the header. So the first 8 bytes from the above layer which is coming from the transport layer contains the information about the port address of the source and the receiver. Now this information is to be kept in the ICMP so that the sender can can understand that which packet is being, dis uh, is being discarded because there is a possibility that at the sender machine there are many applications are running. So by receiving this ICMP the sender can realize which of the packet has been discarded and then it will take unnecessary steps.
So keep in mind that the data part of the ICMP will consist of 20 bytes of the IP header which is uh, which is uh, taken from the packet which is being discarded and plus 8 bytes from the data part. So now let's have a look uh, about the first kind of error which is called destination unreachable and the type of this kind of error is 3. Now this error can be raised because of many possible uh, reasons and we are calling each reason with a code so we have 0 to 15 codes are possible so in the in the icmp the first four bytes is always the same which consists of type so in this case it is three the code may be any value that is 0 to 15 depending on the on the on the on the error which is um, which is actually occurred and then the checksum checksum we have already discussed how to create a checksum if there is with some errors we are going to write some information here if there is nothing to mention then this four bytes is going to be filled by all zeros and this is the data part which consists of the ip header plus eight bytes of the datagram data as i told you that uh, because of having some error, the packets are being discarded either by the router or by the destination itself. There are two possible cases when the packet is discarded by the destination, means the packet is able to reach to the destination, but the destination is going to discard this packet because of two reasons, and these two reasons are referred by code 2 and code 3. All other reasons are the reasons. Uh, which are taken care by the routers means all other errors are actually uh, occurring at the routers and routers are going to create an ICB packet and then send it back to the sender though for this entire communication means when the two machines want to communicate when the source want to send something to the, to the receiver though the TCP IP protocol suits take the utmost care that all kind of errors can be handled but there is no guarantee that uh, that every possible error is to be detected by the routers so we'll see one by one what are the uh, different codes which is going to type 3 again keep in mind type 3 is destination not reachable so code 0 is something which tells that network is not reachable before we go to all of the codes, let us have a look on code 2 and code 3, which is basically the reason uh, when the error is occurring at the destination and the, and the destination is going to reject the packet or discard the packet. The protocol is unreachable. Keep in mind that IP datagram is always uh, used as a carrier to carry uh, the above layers information like uh, it is going to carry the data which belongs to the transport layer which is using the UDP, TCP or OSPF so a packet is being uh, being uh, delivered from the source using a higher level protocols but when it goes to a destination the destination might not be running these any of the protocols and then its packet is being discarded and then the ICMP is created and then delivered back to the sender this is code 2 Code 3 is a situation scenario when, when a packet is delivered, you must be knowing that when the two applications agrees to communicate, they are actually uh, generating one port numbers, means every application is assigned one port number and on these port numbers they are running. So there is a possibility, initially they have assigned to communicate, both the sender receiver is assigned one port numbers, when the sender delivers some data, it goes to the receiver. But at that point of time, that application is stopped working and means that port is not available. So at that point of time, the packet is going to be discarded and is uh, returned to the sender as an ICMP message to uh, report this kind of error. The other errors are also there. So now code 4 is a kind of situation when the packet goes to the router and router before forwarding the packet, it will refer to the MTU of the, of the connecting uh, network and it going to realize that MTU value is less than the than the packet size then the packet need to be fragmented but router find that inside the packet the DF that is called do not fragment the do not fragment bit is set to 1 so 
keep in mind that there is a df bit which tells that the packet is allowed to be fragmented or not in some cases the sender did not allow the routers to fragment the packet and if the routers find that in, a, in order to forward the packet it needs to be fragmented but the df value is set to 1 in that case the packet is to be discarded I means the router is saying that i cannot able to forward the packet because the packet size is large and you are not allowing me to to fragment this packet so i am going to discard this packet so either you can send the packet in the smaller size or you keep or, or you set the df bit equal to zero so this is the kind of information that the router is going to communicate to the sender when this kind of error is occurring the code 5 is an error which is uh, happening because of the source routing we discussed in the previous protocol that in the option part in the option part of the header we can fix the routing of the packet that is called strict source routing where we assign the ips of the of the intermediate routers and we are saying that my packet need to be uh, uh, transmitted to these ips only but when the packet is actually transmitted and these ips are not occurring during the transmission in that case the router is going to discard it so this is a case of uh, code 5 means it is not possible to reach the destination again this is a case of type 3 and not reachable then we have uh, code 6 now out of these uh, many reasons many of the cases are now deprecated because already we have uh, the protocols which are emerging they are already uh, taking care of many of the reasons like this code 6 it was earlier proposed this kind of error but now this kind of error is not uh, existing no more in the present scenario so many of the code we can see that is now a kind of deprecated they have uh, they, they are I mean, this kind of error is no more seen uh, let us take some more uh, kind of errors like uh, code 8 the source host is isolated so there is a scenario when the packet is forwarded to any any host machine so it has to go through the routers routers is keep on forwarding based on the network address and there is a possibility when the packet is going to deliver to the final destination and this host which is a part of any network now this host address has now not been assigned to any of the machines so this ip is now being isolated and is not a part of any network so in that case the code 8 error is being uh, raised and the icmp packet is sent to the sender similarly uh, we have when the when the destination host is known and is not known means the ip which is mentioned as a destination address is not able to identify this is the code 7 code 9 is a situation when there is a kind of a firewall or some restriction is applied at the network and uh, all the packets are not allowed to enter to this network in that case the packet is being discarded by the gateway routers which prohibits entering any outside packets and it will be um, responded back to the sender that this packet is discarded because of the code 9 the network is being prohibited sometimes network is prohibited the other case when the host is prohibited so we have different code 9 and uh, code 9 and uh, code 10 similarly when uh, we have some uh, host or you can say that we have some host machines or server machines which are running on special services they are only providing a special kind of services so if the packet is uh, reaching to the router which is destined for any server or any host machine which is not a uh, meant for a requested service in that case the router is also going to discard the packet because the requested service is not going to uh, served or serviced by the receiving ip this is code 11 likewise we have a uh, kind of uh, 12 13 14 15 so uh, this kind of cases like uh, the case which we have discussed for the network 
so uh, the entire network is basically dedicated for providing a defined kind of service or any host machine is also being uh, uh, defined for providing a kind of uh, defined service so if any of the request coming which is not fulfilling this kind of service or uh, or if the, it is not requesting this kind of service it is to be discarded similarly uh, uh, we have uh, some networks which allow the packet which which have a defined precedence we have uh, many authorities these are called administrative authorities or the internet authorities they are also sending the packets to 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 check the efficiency of the network to check the congestion and to uh, to evaluate the performance of network so many of the packets they are keep been on sending so they are assigning the priorities also to the to the to the packets some networks uh, which is only accepting a packet of a defined priority so if a packet is delivered to any network which is not matching to the priority mentioned uh, to the network or even to the host then also the packet is going to be discarded so let us take a scenario where the host is a kind of uh, defined that it can only accept a packet whose precedence is more than 4 so if any packet reaching with the precedence value less than 4 will be discarded and then also be uh, acknowledged through the icmp message to the sender that your packet is being discarded because host is only going to accept the precedence more than 4 something like this so there are many possible scenarios where the error can be generated and this protocol is specifically icmp is trying to uh, inform the sender that the packet is being discarded so the sender can take an appropriate step the next is source quench basically the source quench is there is no flow control or congestion control mechanism in the ip protocol so we have seen that ip protocol is uh, kind of very unreliable and we don't have any error control mechanism there is no flow control or congestion control defined flow control and congestion control basically uh, deals with the capability of the sender and receiver or to establish a synchronization between the sender and receiver so the sender is sending a data at a higher rate but the receiver is not going to consume that amount of data the data is going to be discarded so source quench kind of message is going to establish a synchronization between the two entities the sender and receiver so that the two entities can share the data as per their kind of uh, capability and may, and then take care that no data can be going to be discarded or lost so here this is called type 4 type 4 is for the source quench and uh, code is 0 so we have only one possible reason in this category then check some as we have seen that the four bytes are having a similar structure and then other four bytes would be filled with all zeros and we this the data part which consists of ip header plus eight bytes of the datagram now one source quench message is sent for each datagram that is discarded due to congestion let's say the router is only each router has maintains their buffer where the packet sits and wait for the term to be processed and forwarded to the next router so let's say the router capacity is 5 so at a time any five packet can sit and wait for the router to be processed let's say the six packet is reaching to the router and the buffer space has already been filled by the router then uh, in that case this new packet is going to be discarded by router and then router is going to send one icmp it's a type 4 code 0 it will be sent to the sender to mention that uh, already i am full and please slow down your speed because the packet is going to discard it because there is a lot of congestion in the network so this kind of information is provided to sender and accordingly the sender has to uh, behave and uh, and slow down it the uh, uh, packet sending speed if you look to the entire scenario there are a lot of uh, uh, senders are there which are keep on sending the packets uh, to this network so means all are contributing this congestion in the network now some of the senders may be already sending the packets at a very slower rate 
and others may be sending at a very higher rate but the entire effect on the network is let's say high now if a slow sender is sending means uh, let us assume there is a sender who is sending at a very slow rate this transmission and the packet is discarded because of the congestion there is no kind of capability in this protocol to identify that the condition is raised because of which source means all the source will be dealt with the same means all the source are treated equally mean the slow sender will be informed that you are sending at a higher pace please slow down the speed as well as the the sender which is sending at the higher pace will all be also be going to be informed with the same information so uh, means both are treated equally so this is not a kind of uh, uh, threat approach because uh, there is no uh, there is no way to identify who is the sender who is creating a lot of congestion and to which sender it has to be informed the slow down the speed so this is somewhat helping the system to reduce the congestion but there is a drawback that it is not able to identify the correct sender who is going to uh, increase the congestion in the network this is one drawback of this uh, kind of icmp the second uh, kind of limitation of this is that once it is uh, informed uh, to the sender that the there is a lot of congestion you slow down the speed and the sender is now going to send at the slower rate so that not packet will be discarded but later at later stage when the congestion is going to improve there is no feedback to the sender that now there is a improved congestion means there is a better uh, status of the traffic you can increase the speed so uh, um, uh, with the lack of this information the sender is keep on sending with a slower rate so we, we have uh, these two issues with the source quench but later we will see that we have other protocols that is going to uh, uh, address this issue then the next is time exceeded this time exceeded can be raised either by the routers now this is a scenario when uh, when the ttl value becomes zero you must be knowing that uh, the ip packet contains one field called ttl the ttl is basically defines the lifetime of a packet so every time when it goes to a router router before forwarding this packet will decrease the value by 1 so it will make sure that the packet is going to be make how many hopes so if any router gets the packet whose value is set to 0 that means the packet is to be discarded and not will be forwarded to the next hop or the next router so when ttl become 0 packet is discarded and this is a case of time exceeded kind of error and will be informed to the sender that the life time of the packet is discarded so i am going to uh, not forward this packet and discarding it because not all fragments reaching in a certain time limit now this is scenario you must be remembering that uh, the packets are being fragmented because of the mtu when the routers find that the that the next uh the connecting network is having a less mtu then it will divide the packet into many fragments now all these fragment must be reaching to the destination in a defined time so the rule is whenever the first fragment reaches to the destination destination will start a timer with some limit and with that duration all the fragment must reach to the destination if all the fragments are not reaching to the destination within that defined uh, time then all the packets will be discarded so when the packets are discarded it will send an icmp message to the sender that i am going to discard all the packets because i am not receiving all the fragment of this packet in a defined time so this is the time exceeded case so let us look uh, at the uh, packet format now keep in mind the type 11 means time exceeded message uh, time exceeded error and this is how we are going to uh, write the icmp packet the code is 0 or 
Now what is 0 and what is 1? Let us see here. Code 0 is used only by routers to show that the value of the time to live field is 0. So when the sender receives any ICMP message with type 11, that means it's a time exceeded, the packet is discarded because uh, by the routers or the destination, if it is code 0, that means the sender will understand that it is rejected by any router because the lifetime of the packet is, is uh, going to, is already finished. If it is code 1, then the sender will understand that it is discarded by the destination because all the fragments are not reaching on time. So with the code 0 and 1, the sender will understand what is the, who is actually discarding this packet, what is the reason. Then we have a parameter problem, this is another kind of error. This is arising when there is a ambiguity or mistake in the header part of the datagram. So, now what does it mean? It means uh, when a datagram is created, I am talking about the IP, IP datagram. So, datagram consists of header and then the data. Now, header has certain fields. These fields has a defined size and defined meaning. If any of the field is not properly defined, then this is a case of parameter problem. For example, the, the first uh, four bits are used for the version. Let's say if the version is defined as 3 or 7 or 8. So uh, if, if the, if the uh, communication is based on the version 4 and if the version is not set as 4, it's a parameter problem. Similarly, if uh, the, the, the uh, next field is the header length, h length. h length will tell us the size of the of the header but only four bits are assigned to represent this so let's say the value of hln is set to 3 which is an error because as per the rule the header size must be minimum 20 20s so 3 means 3 into 4 is 12 so 12 bytes so which is not feasible value so likewise there are different fields are there in the header if any of the fields is uh, is having an error or getting corrupted during the transmission it is reported to the sender that I am going to do discard the um, um, this is to inform to the sender that packet is being discarded because of this uh, problem means there is a mistake in the header now this is uh, have a look this is a, a type 12 code 0 or code 1 now we'll see what is code 0 so code 0 is if the error and ambiguity in one of the header fields now when you talk about the header we have two points we have divided the header into two parts the 20 bytes is the mandatory part and 40 bytes is an optional part means the entire header consists of 60 bytes out of which 20 is mandatory and 40 is optional so if there is an error in the first 20 bytes then there is a use of this pointer uh, you can see this is a this pointer is being used here this pointer will will tell the byte number let's say if i write this value one that means the error is in the very first byte that is corresponding to the version number so with the pointer value we are going to tell to the sender that which particular field is corrupted or have a mistake but this is only used when it is code zero means if there is a mistake in the mandatory part in the first 20 bytes if it is happening if there is a mistake in the optional part then we will write code equals to one but this pointer field is not used then this entire four bytes is filled with zero so this is how the parameter problem is addressed this is a special kind of uh, error reporting because in so far whatever the error we have seen in every case the packet is discarded and the ICMP is delivered to the sender to inform the kind of error but this is a special case where the packet is not discarded packet is forwarded but still the ICMP is generated to send to the sender to to make it more efficient to make it more efficient transmission now this is a scenario where this is the two uh, uh, entities A and B they want to communicate and uh, A want to send a some packet to B 
so if you look to this kind of uh, topology the 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 best path to deliver is a must be sending it to r2 and then to b but when a uh, came to, when this machine becomes a part of network it will just update it its own routing table and the routing table has information that the gateway router is r1 so whatever is to be delivered it is leaving to r1 and without knowing that there is also possible uh, router is there which which will make the efficient transmission so what this entity a is doing what this uh, center a is doing it is sending a packet to r1 so r1 need to forward this packet and before it can forward the packet it will realize that for a1 the better route is r2 instead of sending to me it it would be better if it would send to r2 so what the uh, router r1 is doing in that case router r1 is not discarding the packet it will be the forwarding forwarding the packet to r2 so that it can be delivered to destination b but at the same time it will send an icmp packet to to the sender a while telling that i am not the best path so next time if you want to communicate to b you better send it to to router r2 and with this information the sender a will going to update its own routing table so that in future communication it will send to r2 so redirection is something which is going to improve the routing table of the sender so that the communication can be better just keep in mind that in all other uh, icmp packets that the packets is being discarded but here the packet is not discarded but is still forwarded to the router r2 and at the same time the icmp packet is also generated so this is a special case so here you can see this is a uh, type 5 and we have code 0 to 3 uh, depending on the various reason as we are aware that the routers are uh, designed based on the, the different uh, criteria some are uh, based on the network specific some are host specific some are network specific with a specific type of service so depending on uh, on the on the on the structure of the router configuration these codes are being used so if it is a redirection we will write that it is a retry direction that is 5 and based on the criteria we will write the code value and the other things remain the same then we have query messages so just to revise that uh, icmp is used for two purposes one is the error reporting that is uh, to inform the sender that the packet is being discarded because of any any error occurred during the transmission the other purpose of icmp is query messages this is basically uh, used to improve uh, the kind of communication and also to help the routers and host to improve their routing tables two pairs are used today so uh, we have uh, um, uh, initially when this query messages are defined they are defined for uh, many services uh, actually five services out of three out of five three services have been deprecated means the job which is defined for the three services which are deprecated has taken by some other protocol like uh, uh, some of the job which are handled by the query messages are taken care by the arp some is taken by the dscp so uh, the other three are deprecated but two are uh, still in use one is called echo request and reply the other is called time stamp request and reply now echo request message is a is a request message that can be sent by any host or router and the reply is uh, one who is going to receive the request so reply message will be only delivered by any machine who will will get the echo request uh, packet will 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 reply with the echo reply icmp now why we are using this this can be used by the network managers to check the operations of ip protocol they will check the reachability of host means if i want to check that any host is reachable or not any ip is Uh, working or not then this can be done by using this kind of icmp and this can be achieved by by a command that is called ping command the ping command is actually uh, implementing this echo request and reply 
which we'll see by running the command then next is a time request and time reply this is another kind of uh, query messages in the form of ICMP is used this is basically used to calculate the round trip time between the source and destination machine this is very very important because we are always interested uh, for the network performance or to do many calculations we want to find out what is the round trip time round trip time is a time to deliver a message to the receiver and then get the acknowledgement back which is called round trip time so with the help of this uh, time request and reply icmp we are able to find the round trip time between the two uh, uh, machines the source and destination so let's look at that how we can use this so time distance request and reply format is this type 13 is for the request and 14 is for the reply so if you are going to send an icmp request packet uh, time stamp request packet you are going to write type 13 the code will be 0 then there is a checksum and uh, keep a note that always these 4 bytes are remain same now identifier and sequence number is not defined by the protocol but it is used by the by the sender in different context so now these are the 3 important fields original time stamp, receive time stamp, transmit time stamp so original time stamp is the is the value uh, of the time means at what time the packet is delivered by the sender and we are going to write this time in millisecond receive timestamp is the value when the packet is received by the receiver so the, uh, this value is again right in the milliseconds and transmit timestamp is the is the time when the packet is being replied back means when the reply packet has been delivered from the receiver so let me again repeat original time stamp is the time when the packet is sent by the sender received time stamp is the time when it is received by the destination and transmit time stamp is the time when the packet is sent back from the receiver to the sender all the times are written in the milliseconds so we can find the round trip time using this formula so sending time is receiving time stamp minus original time stamp these are obvious calculations receiving time is return time stamp minus transit time and when we add the two values sending time and receiving time you will get the round trip time it is not always the same that sending time and receiving time are same uh, they may be same they may be uh, different there is a for example and the, to send any packet to the receiver it will take let's say four second but getting a reply back it will take six second so it all depends on the congestion because the congestion is something which is keep on changing a dynamic situation which is keep on changing so sending time and receiving time is not the same it may be same so when you add the two timing it will give you the round trip time so we'll take uh, some numericals on this one thing to note that uh, sending time and receiving time is only able to calculate when the two clocks are synchronized means actually we know that we are communicating in a different part of the world and uh, they are having their their different time zones so sending time and receiving time is having a meaning to calculate when both are already synchronized both are using the same time zone then only you get time when it is received by the destination and transmit time stamp is a time when the packet is sent back from the receiver to the sender all the times are written in the milliseconds so we can find the round trip time using this formula so sending time is receiving time stamp minus original time stamp these are obvious calculations receiving time is return time stamp minus transit time stamp. and when we add the two values sending time and receiving time you will get the round trip time it is not always the same that sending time and receiving time are same uh, they may be same they may be uh, different there is a for example and the, to send any packet to the receiver it will take 
let's say four second but getting a reply back it will take six seconds so it all depends on the congestion because the congestion is something which is keep on changing a dynamic situation which is keep on changing so sending time and receiving time is not the same it may be same so when you add the two timing it will give you the round trip time so we'll take uh, some numericals on this one thing to note that uh, sending time and receiving time is only able to calculate when the two clocks are synchronized means actually we know that we are communicating in a different part of the world and uh, they are having their their different time zones so sending time and receiving time is having a meaning to calculate when both are already synchronized both are using the same time zone then only you get the correct value